Hello, this is Sean O'Connor with Smart Design. I'll be your chairman for this year's design track at FEI Europe. Our theme is Design Therapy, Enhancing Lives and Improving Business. We will be investigating how design brings together disparate functions within an organization to unlock innovation potential. I'm very excited to introduce one of our speakers who's been thinking about how design can improve people's lives for the past 30 years, Jeremy Meyerson. An academic, author, and activist in design, he began his career as a journalist and was the founder and editor of Design Week in 1986. Jeremy also co-founded the Helen Hamlin Center for Design at the Royal College of Art in 1999. He is the director of the center and the first ever holder of the Helen Hamlin Chair of Design. Last year, Wired Magazine named Jeremy one of Britain's most influential people in digital technology, a testament to his commitment to placing design at the center of the front end of innovation. Hello, Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Um, you know, when I read your bio, I was really intrigued by the phrase activist in design. Can you, can you describe what is a design activist? I think a design activist is somebody who is actively uh, pursuing agendas for change. And I think that I've always, as well as being an academic and an author, I've always been somebody who has pushed for change in, in the design education curriculum and also in design practice in response to external factors, whether those are technological or social. Fantastic. It's a great term. I think we need to use it more often. <laughs> um, so for those who are not familiar with the Helen Hamlin Center, can you tell us a bit about why it was founded in the first place and what are your objectives as an organization? Well, the objectives of the Helen Hamlin Center for Design um, are very simple. It's designed to improve life. And we have a 20-year track record. We were founded in 1991 as the Design Age program. So originally, we, have, we were a single focus um, action research center. And we were looking at the design implications of aging population. And back in the early 90s, it was far less on the radar than it is now. Um, and we developed a lot of techniques and user design uh, methods uh, in the 90s to engage with, 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 with later life issues around products and services. And out of that focus, we've expanded into a kind of fully fledged research center with three labs. So one lab is still looking at aging. One is looking at health and patient safety, particularly in the hospital and care home environment. And the third one is, the third lab is looking at work and city, particularly workplace design and innovation and, and, and technology and community and, and, and those kinds of issues, more on an architectural and urban scale. So we are a, a practice-based research center. So all our researchers are practicing designers. They're industrial designers or architects or design engineers or visual communication people. We have a belief that to uh, do seamless research um, with, with, with user groups and turn that into kind of translatable innovation, um, we believe that, that, that you really need designers to go on, on the journey at the front end of the innovation process. And that very much is our mantra. So it's not a question of asking social scientists to um, do the early stage front end research and then throw it over the wall to designers. What we're trying to do is have designers right at the front end of the innovation process and then, then going on the journey all the way through. It's, I think, a very common theme today, but not one that was common yesterday. So I think your organization probably, you know, broke down some barriers and, and, and started doing that very early on. We did, and we, we have always, even though we have a quite um, broad social remit to, you know, to design to improve, help people, you know, to improve their lives in all aspects, um, we have attracted a lot of industry support and industry engagement because I think companies want to get closer to their customers. Uh, they're very, very interested in widening markets. So our agenda around inclusive design has been one that's been very attractive to business. Great. So at the conference, you will be providing a presentation on rethinking the consumer-producer relationship and moderating a panel on the same subject. Um, now, you've done some recent work that inspired this topic in the medical field with ambulatory care. Um, what were some of the highlights from that experience? Well, we've just 
completed a major project with the London Ambulance Service and the London NHS to redesign um, the London Emergency Ambulance, and we've worked with our vehicle design school to do that. And what has come up is, is very much a process um, involving patients and paramedics to actually create a, 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 a new uh, approach to emergency mobile health care in London. And the ambulance interior that we redeveloped is just one of the things um, that is part of a bigger system, but I will be showing it at the conference um, in February. Um, I think there's a broader message behind projects such as that, and that is the relationship with designers and the people they're designing for. Um, I think that everybody understands now, and you know, I think the design track at the front end of Innovation Conference has been very influential in this. We need design and designers at the front end of the innovation process. I think that argument is, is, well, is well made and, and largely recognized. What I want to talk about at the conference is the type of design and designers you have at the front end of the innovation process. And I think that we do need, based on my experience of our own projects and also you know, looking, at, looking at, across the spectrum of, of, of business collaborations, we do need a form of design engagement which is participatory and on a shared basis with, with, with user groups rather than going in with an expert mindset and treating people um, as lab rats that you, you know, pa you know, people who will passively accept what you design for them and you study them with a kind of neutrality uh, as though you're wearing a white lab coat. I think what we need is much more equal relationships between producers and consumers in which designers are facilitators in a, in a co-design, co-creation process. And those are the kinds of things I'm going to be talking about. And I'm going to also be talking about some of the methods that you might, you might deploy. That sounds great. Um, so that that sounds like a you know a big shift from how most people think of you know leveraging consumers within the design process. Yeah, I'm really that, talking about taking them along for the ride. Well, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, the whole idea of designing for people, which is a very valid and important aspect of design practice, goes right back to the Henry Dreyfus book of the mid 1950s, 1955 you know, designing for people. And, and um, you know, that has been the doctrine of design practice for a very long time. And very sophisticated user engagement methods have been uh, developed to design for people. But I think now we're looking at a situation where we, ne we need to design with people. Um, we need to engage them on an equal footing. We need to find new tools and techniques that will allow people um, to share in the creative processes um, so that they will own the outputs uh, as they emerge and, and want to make use of design that the companies uh, put their way. So it is a kind of paradigm shift in a way, and how you move across from designing for to designing with people is very much the subject of my paper. Well, personally, I'm really excited to learn more about the shift from designing for people to designing with people during the innovation process. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the design track at this year's FEI conference in Zurich from the 27th to the 29th of February. I'm looking forward to it very much, too. Thank you. To learn more about FEI Europe or for registration information, log on to www.iirusa.com forward slash FEI Europe. Until then, have a smart day.